Hello and welcome to my Crazy Watches channel. This is a review of the old and new Hamilton Pulsar uh, reissue, a comparison between the 1972 and the 2020 uh, re-edition. And I was looking forward to someone putting this next to the other for quite a while and make a comparison on YouTube, but that pretty uh, didn't, ma didn't materialize over the last uh, 18 months or so since the watch has been available on the market so here we go I decided to buy it myself and make a pretty much side-by-side -side comparison and taking the opportunity I would also like to uh, take a look at the broader spectrum and compare the previous Hamilton Men in Black reissue versus the 1973 P3 edition so here we go the whole reissue family with some bits and pieces on the side for uh, better clarity. So I'll just focus straight off the bat on the P3 and the Hamilton uh, Men in Black edition. I think that was around the year 2000 more or less. And as you can see here, they just copied uh, the outside design. Uh, you can't really reuse any of the additional parts. The crystal is slightly bigger, contains just a standard generic Chinese made LCD uh, module with uh, with a with a swapped uh, polarizing filter, so the digits are inverted uh, on a, on a black uh, surface. Uh, the module pretty much is here. You can see it also on uh, the inside. Just standard four pushers with pretty pretty much basic, nothing nothing fancy there. Um, standard module uh, that just takes a standard large battery on this very simple substrate, um, just a few functions and backlight, nothing fancy, but people really uh, consider this, this watch to be highly collectible due to the association. So uh, the old version had time and date and was set on the back with a magnet. We're putting those into those two minute an hour indentations. So uh, the bracelet itself is also very similar. However, you can't really reuse them uh, as the modern version has a lip that protrudes further out. So again, although they're very similar, uh, they're not very reusable. The only good thing about it is a quick release strap with a very comfortable click that is uh, very handy. So uh, that's just a side-by-side -side comparison of the P3 editions and now let's dive into the P2 which I must say is very uh, well made except the fact that they needed to amend it for an LCD uh, on top so uh, as you can see here the P2 shows uh, time and seconds only and this is the early edition of 1972 with the light sensor at the bottom but other than that it's uh, looking quite sleek after so many years and the funny thing about those re-editions is that this one is made to the exact same size the deviations there is pretty much 0 0.2 0 0.4 of a millimeter however again you can also not reuse those parts to a large degree uh, the bracelet is much heavier and made of solid steel versus hollow so this watch feels much heavier on the wrist and of course due to uh, well copyright and, and pretty much rights reserved uh, the Pulsar name went to uh, Seiko back in the day so Hamilton had to stick to the Hamilton logo and that's the reason why they called it PSR in short uh, to, to sound like Pulsar um, the other thing that is different is the clasp. The P2 was considered to be a generic sports watch, so therefore you have a very fancy and pretty much very handy deployment clasp foldover, whereas this one for some reason is a butterfly foldover. Not very handy, not uh, again solid, heavy, but I wouldn't really pick this solution for a sports watch. They should have gone with something similar or maybe even copy the the p3 edition here that is very easy to use and pretty much would suit this re-edition 
much uh, better. But let's just dive into the details itself. As you can see here, the crystal is transparent. They tried to save some money and also make the transparency a little bit better, uh, considering that red ruby crystals are pretty, pretty expensive to make. And you can just pretty much look at the module itself. You can see that the LCD is uh, on top and you can always kind of look at it through the transparent glass. It would be a little bit more difficult if we would put this one on top. It would be barely, barely visible. Although again, I would rather just stick to something in between instead of just a red plastic filter uh, next to a transparent glass. And if we look at uh, the module, the original module from those years, you can hardly see it, but if I just kind of zoom in here, yeah, you can pretty much see that those digits are like, they consist out of a, of a dot matrix. Um, very, very cool design that people are really looking forward to. And that's pretty much something similar that they did also here. If we click on the button, they display, the, the LCD goes away and we see the digits of the LED itself. It's, uh, to be honest, the LED is at the bottom, the LCD is at the top. When you press the button, the LCD goes blank, so it doesn't really, uh, let's say, uh, well, interfere, and the light from underneath the bottom layer of the display lights up. And that's pretty much why I really wanted to do make this review, because no one really made a side-by-side -side review of the technology of, of, of these devices. And I was always kind of keen to see what this is really made out of. And if you pop the module out of the case, this is a standard plastic carrier with a three volt 2032 CR battery, quite common for these types of watches. And if we pop the hood, you can see that, whoops, that's kind of flimsy. The display itself is attached to the substrate, as you can see also here, those two layers of LCD and LED glued together. You can't really uh, repair this. You will have to replace the whole thing if, it is, if this would go bust. And they are all together fitted onto the substrate with standard clips that are quite easy to uh, disconnect. And that's also a hack that you can also apply yourself without any damage to the movement just disconnect the layer that is responsible for the LCD out of those clips and you will have just an LED. You will not no longer see the LCD displaying and you can always kind of revert that back to the original solution without uh, any damage. The substrate is, is very simple uh, with some additional sensors there and all that attached to a piece of black uh, plastic. That's all there is to it. Uh, not really sure if this is really worth a thousand dollars of at least or at least minimum seven hundred dollars retail considering that they advertise this as a Swiss made watch which I don't believe it is. It's probably just assembled in uh, Switzerland out of foreign uh, parts. Uh, the case might be machined in, in uh, Switzerland but other than that it's quite uh, expensive compared, for instance, the, to the Bulova Computron reissue, which cost around $200. So again, that's quite a hefty price tag for a digital watch that doesn't really have that much of uh, circuitry included in it. But overall, it's quite well made, heavy stainless steel, well machined, and if you really just compare it to the original, you can pretty much tell that uh, well, the, the quality is pretty much similar, but totally different technology. You can also tell that this is the back cover which is screwed on, whereas the old cover had to be uh, applied with, an, with a ring on the outside to allow for those indentations to remain intact. And of course, the original has magnetic buttons with reach switches, whereas this button just pretty much goes back and forth, then pretty much touching this little click button on the side. So I just check that again. And there you go. They're slightly bigger than the original, uh, a little bit uh, 
higher and taller all together. Uh, so again, uh, I like it. I'm, I'm quite impressed with the reissue compared again to the Bulova Computron, which is much cheaper, but the LEDs are not as sleek and uh, original looking as the Pulsar. What I would just really do is get away with the LCD on top uh, replace the glass crystal here with the original uh, red lens and that, that's probably something I will I will do myself because just for your information this original crystal the red one is just 0 0.2 0 0.4 smaller than the gap uh, of the transparent crystal so you can easily just remove the transparent crystal put the red one in and the gap of 0 0.2 will be pretty much like hard to notice overall once you fit it in place with um, with proper epoxy and then once you remove or disconnect the LCD uh, from this module you will have an original modern pulsar quite sturdy shock resistant uh, probably will be much more reliable than old circuitry of the original uh, pulsar module and it will serve you pretty much a lifetime and of course you can always revert it back to the LCD screen or even maybe just keep the LCD screen and uh, turn off the LED if you so wish so altogether again just a overall comparison of the pulsar reissue story uh, quite happy with it the recent one at least not really the, the men in black version here uh, but I hope you liked it and uh, well stay tuned for more. I hope I will have the time to uh, yeah, show you some more inside stories of these fancy gizmos. Thank you. Okay, quick update guys. I have disconnected the LCD uh, panel uh, from uh, the module and now it doesn't really display anything. It looks more like the uh, original from 1973. Let's see what happens when I press the button right now. So, yeah, there we go. Bright LEDs, and you need to press the button to uh, have that display show up on you. And if we then compare it, sorry, if we compare it to the original, you can tell that the digits are much bigger, I would say. Yeah, taller and slightly bigger. The only annoying thing about this reissue is that there is a lag. You press the button and there's like half a second lag between the button push and the display itself. Not sure why that is. Uh, it's quite annoying at least from my perspective. You should have the display instantly like it was back in the day. I mean not sure why they did it deliberately. Probably because uh, the logic of the module has to uh, be informed that well let's disconnect the LCD in order for the LED to be uh, displayed so probably that lag is there for that particular reason but overall yeah uh, I like the Hamilton PSR without the LCD panel on top and if we then put the red screen on the original 1970s panel on top of the screen itself Let's see what we get. I think we get a much appealing uh, watch uh, because that's pretty much the intention of it. The red screen is there to uh, remove any ambient light from entering the module and interfering with the LEDs. And uh, I really like that. I think I'll just pretty much remove the transparent glass and, and fit in a 1970s display. And uh, have a more sturdy watch that I can just really knock about uh, without any well any any fear of, of damaging uh, a relic that well it's pretty much almost 40 50 years old so uh, it, it needs to pretty much be preserved for generations to come whereas this one can become your uh, daily uh, daily beater so that's it uh, just to again just to compare I'll just do this side by side and turn on the LCD, sorry, LED and see what we get. So you can see here the comparison is quite dramatic between the transparent glass and the red ruby. You get 
a totally different brightness so of course if that's something you uh, really want then that's fine uh, by me I just prefer the originality of the of the of the display itself they really nailed it in terms of getting those tiny LEDs just right like the original compared for instance to the Bulova computer which has nasty heavy modern LEDs uh, they really did quite a good job and it's all encapsulated in a very thin layer uh, of glass um, so yeah good on you Hamilton so if you liked it well hey give you a thumbs up but overall if you have any comments questions just uh, drop your comments below thank you